in episode 66 I left you somewhat in despair after I believed I had fried a new brand new MPPT uh, solar chargers. We're back in Shelton Bay Marina which is nice but uh, really we had no intention of coming back here and spending all this money on the marina but with the problems with the uh, uh, solar we've got the, we felt we had no choice really. Anyway for the month we've done 62.77 we've done 20.3 today it says that seems a lot anyway there we go and uh, wind wise uh, we had a maximum of 17.7 knots and we managed a maximum of 7.3 knots and shortly after we arrived my good friend Travis came across to help with his help uh, we adjusted some of the settings on the MPPTs uh, the most critical one was that we didn't have the battery set as uh, lithium so there was a danger we might have damaged the batteries however the MPPTs seemed to be fine except that we kept getting fault messages and they were hashtag 66 hashtag 66 means that uh, you have an incompatible device or you have incompatible devices uh, in the network and since they're all uh, Victron they're all uh, relatively modern they're all compatible however Travis was able to track this down to the firmware by updating the firmware uh, to the latest standard on all three of the MPPTs we got rid of that hashtag 66 fault message we couldn't get rid of the hashtag 28 fault message the hashtag 28 fault message says that it is a, a charger power stage issue you may not know that MPPT stands for maximum power point tracking in other words it has some cunning algorithms in the device which tracks the maximum power point that the, the solar panels are producing and that is sort of where the I think it's uh, the watts and the ampage uh, meets uh, um, on a graph. Uh, a normal charger just limits the, the maximum so that you don't overcharge anything, over boost anything uh, and uh, does not uh, produce the maximum possible amount of power. These are designed to produce the maximum uh, possible amount of power and as a result they track this maximum power point uh, where this the two sides of this graph uh, uh, intersect and as that changes which it does don't ask me why but as it changes over time uh, depending on the sun's output and the solar uh, energy uh, it follows it making sure that you're getting the maximum power throughout the day as a result they're quite a lot more expensive than a standard charger and I was horrified to discover that I uh, might have fried the MPPTs. As I say, we were able to get rid of the incompatible one without much difficulty, but we could not get rid of the hashtag 28. The solution, according to Victron, is to remove all the wires from the MPPT and then reconnect all the wires back to it. If that doesn't remove the fault message, there is a fault with the actual MPPT and it must be replaced. I was distraught. As these are in the order of 700 US dollars uh, here however Travis was able to advise me that these are under warranty and that uh, all I needed to do was to uh, contact Victron and put in a warranty claim I was slightly reluctant to do this because it seemed obvious to me that somehow I had caused this problem however uh, a couple of days later uh, I was persuaded uh, to uh, put in a warranty claim. In the meantime, um, while Travis and I were uh, sorting out these issues, uh, we started to get smoke again coming from the cupboard where all this electrics uh, is contained. I ran down there to switch off the MPPTs only to discover the smoke was not actually coming from the MPPTs but coming from the inverter itself. I stood and looked at it in, in, in disbelief wondering what to do or why it was doing this and while I was doing that, it just switched itself off and, and it was dead. So I then switched off the, the switch as well. I switched it off. Now I was absolutely distraught. Uh, not only did I need a new MPPT, I needed a new inverter. And the inverter is significantly more expensive than the MPPTs. 
However, again, Travis asked me how old it was. I said we got it fitted to have when we took, before we took possession of the yacht back in 2021. It's about two and a half, maybe a little bit more than that. And he said it's got a five-year warranty. Put in a claim. So as I said, I did put in a claim uh, for the MPPT and I included in the comments that uh, it seemed to have caused a problem with the inverter and I needed the inverter replaced as well. That was, I think, on the Saturday. On the Sunday, when, with the inverter gone, we had no AC power, no alternating current. So anything to plug into the, the wall sockets did not work. The batteries powered the vast majority of the, the yacht and indeed the batteries would power all the yacht through the inverter which made the, the DC direct current into alternating current so that we could use it uh, in alternating current devices like our fridge and freezer downstairs all the wall sockets uh, where we charge our uh, uh, phones and, and iPads and stuff like that uh, everything uh, that we use uh, the electric plate, the electric kettle all these things require alternating current and we had none pointed towards uh, a company in uh, Panama City that would be able to deal with this sort of thing but of course it was the weekend and there was nobody there. On the Sunday Sandra and I were sitting here at the table where I am now having dinner I had cooked dinner and as we were having dinner the low battery warning alarm came on on our electrical panel and uh, I I didn't recognise it for what it was. I went across and had a look and discovered that it was saying that the house battery was low. Couldn't understand it. The Victron uh, servo display showed 13.3 volts, which is, you know, more than 75%, about 85% uh, fully charged. While I was pondering this, basically the lights flickered a few times and then went out. So we had no power, nothing at all. I immediately got to the batteries, which is no small feat in our yacht, but we got to the batteries uh, and I checked the, the uh, house batteries at the terminals and it was showing 13.33 volts, so it, exactly the same as the Victron uh, servo. So there was power in the batteries, but for some reason we were not getting any power anywhere. And I was absolutely in despair at this stage. And Sandra, God bless her, accosted uh, a British guy that was going back and past, also call, called John, uh, who had come to our help previously actually. He came and helped us get the generator going uh, just after New Year um, when I, uh, you know, I was in such despair that the damn thing wasn't working yet again that I ordered the solar panels uh, to try and, you know, free us from its, from its tyranny. He very kindly, although it was now seven or eight o'clock at night, came on board and uh, helped me diagnose the issue. And of course, it was my fault. Uh, next to the inverter, there is a large switch, uh, which I, which it says battery, and I thought uh, it isolated the inverter from the battery, which is what I wanted to do because it had been smoking and, and all this. I didn't want it to burst into flames, so I'd switched that off. Uh, the day before, we uh, discovered that there was no uh, power across a very large switch which uh, I now know is controlled by uh, this uh, little electrical switch. And uh, with me switching it off, somehow the power drained away from this switch. I don't know how, how the switch works, whether it's got a capacitor in it or something, but the power drained away ever so slowly, over 24 hours, um, more or less. And then eventually it went clunk and isolated the batteries from the user circuits. As we didn't know what the cause was, I was able to uh, get round the problem by just connecting the uh, battery output to the other side of this switch, which gave us back DC power. That was something of a relief, but it still seemed that there was huge faults with the electrical system that I could not identify. In the end, uh, these guys came uh, and uh, when they arrived, I have to say they were very nice. One of them spoke really good English. The other one was his dad. And um, with the uh, help of his dad, who was the real electrician apparently, we had a look at the system from top down. And he checked it and agreed that they were now producing, after the adjustments that I had made, that they were now producing the same amount of power. We then uh, went to have a look at the uh, uh, MPPTs and uh, they agreed that all was well, that the circuits that I had uh, uh, made uh, were appropriate 
uh, as I said in the previous video, I copied the original installation and I was confident that it would you know, of a good enough quality. They were happy with the, uh, the MPPT installation and then we moved on to getting uh, AC power back on the, the yacht. The solution was simply to take the AC in, which is the shore power, and the AC out, which goes to the uh, various AC circuits that are on the yacht, and just connect the two together. And he just connected the three wires, the live, neutral, and the, the ground, uh, through a circuit breaker and that gave us uh, AC power back again.
relatively quickly, I say relatively quickly, I mean within the week, in about three days, uh, Victron agreed to replace the MPPT, but it took a week for them to agree to the uh, replacement of the inverter. And I was just, you know, I was for breaking out the champagne and dancing on the streets. Uh, you know, the state of our finances right now are such that replacing both the M uh, both the MPPTs was not feasible. Replacing one of the MPPTs, MPPTs and the inverter was just not feasible. Victron were absolutely wonderful. And we were helped by a guy called Gerrit Jacob, uh, who has a company called uh, Smartbox in Panama City. And he is the Victron representative. He was in conversation with, with Victron and it was he that persuaded Victron to replace both items. The caveat was that I had to pay for the import tax and the, uh, uh, the, the transport uh, to get them here. I, think, I don't think there was import tax, just transport. And that was 400 US dollars. So it still wasn't uh, cheap. But for the two items, uh, that wasn't bad. And the, and the uh, inverter is actually a very, very heavy item. So to cut a long story short, they arrived very quickly. Uh, he, uh, he advised me on the Monday after that that they had arrived and were available for pickup. Uh, we had been planning to go to Panama City anyway to do a, a large shopping run for uh, Travis and Christine on their uh, preparations for crossing the channel, uh, the canal. And uh, we were going to go with them just to pick up a few bits and pieces as well. And while we were there, uh, we were able to pick up the, the two items. I had to return the other two items which meant I had to disconnect the inverter, which was something of a, I was say a struggle, but it, it, it was a job for me, really quite a job. Um, <clears throat> it was the, the really difficult bit was the, the control wires. There was two wires at the bottom, uh, uh, DC wires, both of them uh, you know, a red and a black, um, in funny little connectors uh, at the bottom, uh, where you use a screwdriver to push in an orange kind of button and then pull out the wire. And it was really quite a fiddle to do that, to work out how it worked. I wasn't sure how it worked. And uh, all my attempts at Googling it uh, came up with all sorts of things, but nothing useful at all. He had fitted his own inverter a couple of years before, and he was able to show me how to work these little gizmos. But the combination of the lack of access and the, and the, the angle of access and so on, made it really quite difficult not so much getting them out because I mean, if you pull hard enough the wires come out but getting them back in uh, was going to be an issue I knew right from the start so with Travis's help uh, we got the inverter removed and we took it and the MPPT which I had removed took it to Panama City uh, and got them replaced for the new ones and uh, paid up our $400 which Sandra paid because I just don't have $400 at this minute so, uh, when we got back, we had to fit the inverter and the MPPT. Uh, on the Tuesday night, I fitted the MPPT because that was a relatively easy job. I just had to hang it on the wall and replace all the wires that I had uh, removed from the old one because uh, it's, it's identical to the old one. Uh, I say the old one, <laughs> the one, the faulty one. It was brand new. And then uh, it took me 10 minutes or so to adjust the settings to make sure that they were all correct before uh, connecting it to the solar. The next day, Sandra and I set about uh, installing the inverter and that was something of a struggle. It's extremely heavy, access is difficult and it's, uh, the only really fortunate thing was that because it's identical to the previous one, we didn't have to replace the bracket. We could just because uh, it essentially hangs on a bracket on the wall uh, and we could just slide it onto the bracket but that took a bit of a trick uh, using a couple of uh, pieces of wood and so on to support the weight of it uh, and, and push, uh, push it up close to the bracket and then one heave we got it on and then we set about connecting the wires which as I say the little control wires at the bottom were a real difficult job difficult job Initially, uh, the original uh, installation did not have any uh, uh, ferrules on the end of the wires. There were no connectors or anything on the end of the wires. The wires were just wound up and then pushed in. But I found that every time I did that, I caught the edge of the, uh, the entrance the, and the uh, wire, uh, some of the strands of the wire would bend back. And because the black and the and the red were very close to each other, it was very difficult to ensure that there was no touching wires. So this took me 
uh, well, it took me two days actually. And in the end, I just decided we had to persevere with the original uh, uh, kind of insulation, i.e. just twist up the wires and keep doing it until I got all the wires in. And essentially that's what we did. And eventually we were able to get it under control. Uh, the other connections were relatively simple, including the AC in and the AC out. I had, of course, while we were doing all of this, disconnected us from shore power so that we couldn't get, uh, we couldn't fry the, the new inverter or uh, fry myself. So we disconnected from shore power and we have not been connected to shore power since. Saturday the 23rd I think. Uh, yesterday we deliberately uh, switched the solar off and deliberately ran, ran the batteries down. We put the hot water heaters on and things like that to run them down and then of course uh, there's no solar overnight as well so uh, that meant that the, uh, the batteries went way down, way down to 6% 13 volts or so. Uh, way below where we had the issues uh, the other day. So we now believe that uh, the job is done essentially. Okay, so just to finish off the installation video if you like, uh, these are the two new MPPTs, uh, identical to the one that was uh, fitted in Thailand. Uh, and these two on the right here are running the new solar panels. And we fitted the new inverter, identical to the old one. Uh, and wired it all up and this morning after having made a couple of sets of adjustments to the settings uh, I've now put the cover back on the front uh, which I couldn't do previously it gets pretty hot in here these uh, MPPTs and the inverter uh, run pretty hot and to try and help I've fitted what is essentially a computer a 12 centimeter computer fan I didn't realize it came with wacky lights until uh, I got back and read the, the label a bit more uh, closely but this is sucking air down from here and blowing it down and hopefully uh, uh, clearing air out, uh, hot air out of here. Uh, I don't know whether it's big enough or powerful enough for the job, I don't really know, but anything's got to be better than nothing. There is a cover that goes on here, uh, but that uh, makes this uh, a much more closed, enclosed space and I'm not sure that's necessarily better for the, uh, the in inverter. Uh, if, if the inverter overheats, it's got temperature protection, so it will just uh, close itself down slowly. It will reduce its power and then eventually close itself down. So, with that done, it's now time to close up the uh, covers. No, wrong one, wrong one. That one goes on down here. And this one goes on up here. Job done. Hopefully, fingers crossed.